We also have with us um, Patrick Coburn. He was going to come on after the break to talk about what's happening in Turkey, this stunning uh, uh, entrenchment of the president, Erdogan, who is cracking down um, on dissidents. Uh, it's the return of the Islamist government uh, to power in the parliament and overall. But, Patrick, before we talk about Turkey, you are speaking to us from Istanbul. Can you weigh in on this conversation? I mean, it is much more difficult, as the U.S. government has proven, to wage peace than to wage war. What would waging peace look like? Well, could I make another comment? I think you know, where these U.S. special forces are going is the Syrian Kurdish area. The Syrian Kurds have about 25,000 troops in northern uh, Syria. So the significance of them being there is that they're cooperating with the only real available partner for the U.S. in uh, Syria. Uh, and in that case, depending on what they do, are they forward air observers? Are there going to be deliveries of uh, arms and ammunition? They have a, a certain uh, significance. I mean, the other thing to bear in mind, I think, is that the U.S. and its U.S.-led coalition have had this air campaign that's delivered 7,000 airstrikes against Islamic State uh, since August last year, and that campaign has failed. I think all this focus on Russia and the special forces, so one has to keep that in mind, because Islamic State is still expanding. It took a Christian town near uh, uh, Homs uh, a few days ago, which brings it very close to the crucial north-south highway inside Syria. So I think it's, it's there. People say, does it have any significance? It has some significance. But it also, I think, to, is a show of action, which is rather masking the failure of the previous major uh, strategic initiative by the U.S., which was to have this air campaign, which has demonstrably failed to achieve its ends. And the role of Saudi Arabia, I mean, the way the U.S. media makes it look, you know, out-of-control forces all fighting each other. But we're talking about a major U.S. ally. Um, I think the U.S. has just signed the largest weapons deal in history, not just with Saudi Arabia, but in the world, signed that deal with Saudi Arabia to give weapons. The role Saudi Arabia has played when it comes to al-Qaeda and the rise of ISIS. Yeah. I mean, this is the, the dilemma for the U.S. is not just now in Syria and Iraq, but goes right back to 9-11, that the, um, the basis for U.S. Uh, power in the Middle East is really the Sunni states like Turkey, uh, Saudi Arabia, the Gulf monarchies. Uh, but these are the ones that also have been uh, supporting the uh, opposition in Syria. And as is fairly notorious, uh, have been uh, uh, funding uh, the al-Qaeda uh, affiliate, uh, the al-Nusra Front, Arar al-Sham, which is very similar, and uh, in the past has been accused of uh, sending funds and uh, enabling um, ISIS, the Islamic State. So I think the U.S. has the same dilemma as before, that it kind of knows this, kind of wanted to stop it but doesn't want to do so at the expense of torpedoing their relationship with countries like Turkey or Saudi Arabia, which, as you said, has just signed this enormous uh, arms deal. So I don't think the dilemma has changed, but the response in Washington has always been to find some sort of way of maneuvering that uh, they can uh, do something or look as though they're doing something against Islamic State or al-Qaeda, but still keep in with um, Saudi Arabia and the big Sunni countries of the region. Patrick, you have said that you think the entrance of Russia um, more prominently in Syria could actually improve the chances of peace. Yeah, in one way it complicates it, because you've got yet another player in Syria. And, you know, Syria is five crises wrapped into one, Sunni, Shia, uh, Tehran, uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, Alawite, uh, Sunni, um, and then you have Russia. I think, yes, because uh, Russia uh, is in a position to 
uh, exercise some control over its allies, like uh, uh, Assad in Damascus, uh, the U.S. likewise. So it's only when you have, so to speak, the great powers getting involved that we have a chance of moving from uh, just a, basically allowing, whatever the rhetoric, allowing this terrible war, which has destroyed Syria, is destroying Iraq, to go on. In the past, they've said, yes, we want to end it, but Assad must go. But why should Assad go? Because he controlled most of the population. So for the, for the first time, you have serious players seriously involved. And the very fact that you have Russia coming back, a rival of the U.S., I think makes them take it more seriously. And one can see that already with uh, this meeting in Vienna and the presence of Iran. It has energized the diplomatic process. And of course, it's also de de energized the uh, military activity as well. But there are positives as well as negatives coming mm. out of this. A uh, final comment, Andrew Basevich, uh, as we wrap up this discussion, then we'll move on to journalist Patrick Coburn, who's in Istanbul covering the Turkish elections, on what you think to be, needs to be done right now. Well, I, I, I would be surprised if uh, Russia is able to exercise any serious influence over Syria. And the, the reason I say that is because of our inability uh, to exercise any serious influence over our uh, putative uh, allies. Uh, I think that the point that uh, Petra Coburn was making about these unsavory partnerships uh, that, in many respects, form part of, the, of, of our predicament uh, we have to go. We need to ask ourselves why those partnerships exist. Where did they come from? They came from a perception that the United States uh, is dependent upon Persian Gulf oil. That was an assumption that had some validity uh, back in the late 1970s and 1980s. It has no validity today, as far as the well-being of this country is concerned. And that fact, it seems to me, ought to be one of the things that. Uh, enables people in Washington to begin to think more creatively than they have been thinking about the actual options available to the United States. Andrew Basevich, I want to thank you for being with us. Retired Boston University professor, former colonel, Vietnam War veteran. Joining us from Massachusetts, Phyllis Bennis, thank you as well. A fellow at the Institute for Policy Studies, her latest book, Understanding ISIS and the New Global War on Terror. Patrick Coburn, I hope you stay with us as we talk about what has developed now in Turkey.